Hey kids, this is Mr. Cozy, and I wanted to record a video where I talk you through uh, Lesson 11, because um, I have a, a feeling that some people may be struggling, uh, and in, in particular talk you through this ex extra bit where we, we get a quote off of a website. Um, this video is going to run run a little long because once I talk about lesson 11 specifically, I want to go back and talk about web requests in general um, because I'm guessing that this is sort of op op opening a door for some of you and I want that 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 door to remain open. I want you to cost to be thinking of ways that you can integrate data from the web into your programs. Um, that's when our, our programs can start to be re really powerful and connect to other things that are happening on the internet. So this is going to be a longer video, but let's first start off by talking about um, just an, an, an overview of Lesson 11. You have, you start out with four different interactive w widgets. You have a quote input box, a font family drop drop down box, a color drop drop down box, and a font size slider. Okay, each of these input objects, ways of getting data into your your programs, is going to correspond to a variable. So you want to, to start out with four variables, one for each thing, one for the quote the uh, the quote itself, one for for the font, one for the color, one for the size. And as a pro tip, um, initialize them to sensible values. So like my my quotes my quote is an empty string because there there there, there isn't a quote here yet. Um, the the color and the font are just the first options out of each of these drop downs. And the font size is the default position of this slider. And I um I learned about about these three things just by go, going into the design view and inspecting the different objects. Once you have these four variables in place, the basic outline of your program is as follows. Each of these input objects is going to have its own on event. Okay, that on event is going to um, uh, use a get number or get text to retrieve what's in the 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 matching object and put it in the matching variable. So the on event for color input will get the text out of color input and put it into color. Okay. Um, then what you're you're going to do is you're going to call the th this function that you're you're going to make called update screen and this is a pattern that that we've seen before particularly in um in the inve investigation and practice activities for for functions but basically update screen is a function that's going to to go through each of these variables and set the co the corresponding property for this quote out out output box so it'll set the background color prop property to whatever color is it'll set the font family property to what whatever font is and so on Update screen does the, the the heavy lifting of getting whatever of giving the user a vi visual feedback for what 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 whatever change they've made in the program. 
Okay, so your on events for each each of these widgets are going to consist of one setting the the appropriate variable and two calling update screen. Okay, now as a part of update screen, um, if you follow the guide, there's this this other function that you're you're going to write and you're going to call within update screen that's that that's going to set a a feedback message for certain combinations of fonts and colors and sizes okay that's all in in the guide i don't want it to hash that over um by the way i don't know if you've noticed but the guide is linked in schoology if you click on the assignment there's a link to the guide at the top of of that assignment um, but th this is kind of how you're you're going to get through this this project. Okay, you're going to make four variables. You're going to make four on events. Each on event is going to get the number or the text from the the matching widget, the matching screen object. It's it's going to put it in the matching variable and call update screen, which is going to um, adjust all of the properties in, in, um, in particular in this quote in this quote output box to make whatever the user selected here show on the screen okay so with that in mind let's talk about this this random button okay first first of all you, you'll you'll notice that you need to move around some of the of the objects on the screen to get the random button in there and that's just something that that i did in the the design view okay if you go through the uh the the width the height the text color the background color the font family the font size for for either of these drop downs you can and if if you just co copy those over into the button you can make the button look like it fits in the app okay now the the on event for this random button is going to be very simple it's going to call this this function called get web quote and get web web quote will do all of the heavy lifting of getting a quote from the internet and putting it on your screen okay now i've i've kind of outlined what what you're supposed to do in this function already but i want to do it again because sometimes it helps to hear a person explain it okay uh what what this does now if 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 i just just do a console.log of web quote this is this function is is already working it's it's already going out to the internet downloading a, a quote and putting it in this variable called web quote precisely how that that works if you're interested i'll talk more about that in a moment uh, but if 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 I just console log web web quote and run this, you'll see that that I'm I'm already getting quotes from the web. Okay, so this is what you need to do to complete this function. Take what what whatever is in web quote. And, and put it in your quote variable. Mine is, is called quote string. So copy web quote into your quote variable. Okay. Also, while you are, are at it, use web quote to set the, um, use web, web quote and set text to put the quote in the quote input box so that that people can 
Now, now, now this is the the input box, not the the out output box because you want people to be able to see the quote here and modify it if they want to okay and then uh, once you do that if you just call update screen it will do the uh, the the heavy lifting of putting that quote up up in the window so that's kind of an 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 out, outline of lesson eleven, um, in general and in in particular this the web the web quote part of of this assignment. Uh, if if you if that's all you want to know, you can stop here. Um, I am going to go and talk about how this code works. Uh, so if you're you're curious about that, you 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 can keep listening. I'm going to go and uh, and pause this and kind of prep for that discussion. Okay. Okay. Whenever data is uh, sent on the internet, uh, the two most common formats um, in which data is transmitted are XML and JSON. J S O N. Now the the differences between these two I don't want to to get get into we're 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 we're, we're going to focus on JSON because it's the most JavaScript friendly. Um, but the one the important thing that they both have in common is that they they both present the data using what we call key value pairs. What, so what is a key value pair? Think of a key as a question that you have about or related to the data that you were just sent. And then the value is the answer to that question. Okay, so if we look at um, here you, you see I've 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 pointed my my w web browser to the same website that's in our program uh, api.quotable.io slash random and if you see um, it presents the data that that was sent back uh, as it's 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 Jason this is what 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 it it, it looks like as raw data um, but it's it's organized as key value pairs. Um, I op open this up in in Firefox because um, it does a be a better job of kind of organizing this in information for you. But we see here on the left uh, the keys, the kinds of questions we can ask of this data set, and then the 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 values are the answers. Okay. Um, now, every website organizes their data differently, okay? So the reason why this piece of code here that I wrote works is I went to this, this website, I learned how they present their data, and, uh, in particular, that the body of the quote is in the content key. So I have to ask content, and that's that's what I'm I'm doing here. I'm I'm asking for for the content of the uh, uh, of the data set that was was just sent to me, and I'm I'm getting back as an, an answer, the quote that uh, I was was just sent. Okay. Um, now the thing to really take to heart is this is how this particular web website works. Not every website has a content key that does what what we need it to do. Not every site has an 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 author key that 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 does what we need it to do. 
every website is different. And I say that because if you go to the the documentation for um, for the function that you use to actually do a web request in code.org, um, you'll see that uh, you you can't go go anywhere. That's that's just as a, a security precaution. But there's a whole bunch of sites that you can visit, and each of these sites works differently. So, so here at NOAA.gov, if if I want want to to make a request for weather data, first first of all, there's there's a, a whole slew of, of things that I have to, to do to just to form the um, the URL for the request. And then for that that particular uh, type of request, um, there's there's a, a particular format that the data is presented to me. Um, or is sent is sent to to me as, and I, I I have to know what that is to be able to write a program to to decode it. Okay. Um, so this is why this this little chunk of code works. Um, here I start a web request. Um, here's the the URL. And I get sent a, ch a little chunk of, of data, something like li like this. Um, now, when that uh, when that request comes back, it runs this function. The content variable in this function contains this data that that was sent back as part of the request what this this little um, command is doing is it's taking that 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 data that 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 JSON data and turning it into a JavaScript object I don't want to get too much in the weeds as to precisely what that means what it means to 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 me writing this code is that once I have a JavaScript object, I can um, every key is something that I can can request from the object. So I know I use content twice. This content is the variable that holds the string. That's this this data that was sent to me over the internet. Um, the second content refers to me requesting the value for this key. And then what, what I get back is this, this string that I store in this variable. Okay. If this, if this is something that, that, that really cat, catches your imagination and Make, makes you want to to try things. There's a lot of really cool web what websites that you can visit um, from within code.org. You can't do all of them because um, they they restrict uh, these for security reasons. But each of these um, sites has their 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 own we call it API a way that programs can can form requests for data and then what pro programs can expect to, to receive in terms of keys and values um, in that data and with knowing the, the that those particular rules for a particular site you can uh, write a program to take advantage of it and use that information much like I did here. Okay. One last thing. <clears throat> when we talk about key va value pairs, it can get kind of tricky. 
So the key value pairs in this, this website that we are using for our random quotes are pretty basic. You have a key, you have a matching value, and that's that. But there's actually some, some complexity in how these are built. Are built. For a particular key, you can have a single value. Okay, and that's that's what what we see the most in the the data from um, quote quote quotable dot io. Okay, but you can also have um, a group of additional key value pairs. And the way that, that you want to think about this is as a follow a, a follow up question to clarify. So um, here's a, another website where um, I, I, I used the API to get a uh, 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 data. This is the, the weather data right right now for a, a city in, in China. Um, how this is is organized when you when you ask for the coordinates of the city you know coordinates are two things there's latitude and there's longitude so what you you get is an additional group of key value pairs do you want the the, the longitude because that's this do you want the latitude so so that's this and so there, there 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 are layers in how the data is organized okay so this is one scenario and we we see that further down here if if you want the main weather data there's there's a whole slew of keys that you need to go through and they 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 are all organized under the key main Okay, for wind, there's the speed, there's the the direction, and the, and there's where it it is is gusting at. All of these um, groups of additional key value pairs are given in response to any one of these outer keys here. You can also have a list. Now we haven't seen a long list list yet in in either of these, but you know it's a list because lists are numbered starting at at zero. So when you ask for weather conditions, um, ac according to how this this website works, there are multiple reporting stations in a particular city reporting weather conditions and if you want to get all of those stations you have to go through a list now the thing about this this list is there's there's a couple of options you 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 can have a list of sing <coughs> excuse, excuse me you can have a list of single values and you can think of that as multiple answers to the same question or you 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 can have lists of groups of key value pairs and the way that that you think about that is there's there's just there's a list of possible um scenarios for for each set of follow-up questions and the the organization of the data shows that in this weather data there there's the the potential for multiple stations reporting conditions and you want to you want each each station to have its own entry in the list okay um, so there's a lot of richness in how this this information can can be your be organized and this is uh, between XML and JSON this is predominantly how inf how data is sent across the internet it's sent using these key value pairs 
So hopefully this this was was interesting. If you, um, I'll put a, a, a copy to this 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 uh, this website here um, in in the video description. And uh, if you have an idea and have a thought for, um, you know, writing an, an an app that 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 uses data from the internet check this out now just just a warning none of these are easy all of these sites can can sometimes have very intricate apis very specific and detailed ways that that you form requests and then very specific and de de detailed ways in in which data is sent is sent back to you okay i picked this this quote quotable dot io thing because it, it it was a an an easier site to use all right so um i'm gonna stop here um have fun